What's up YouTube, I'm Mr. No Name, or Max as people know in the real world, and today I'm bringing you guys another competitive tips and tricks video, and the gameplay in the background is actually from the semi-finals of an online tournament we played. Uh, we wound up placing second overall, so we do beat these guys, we get the comeback on them, that's pretty cool. I don't die a single time in the clip that I'm bringing you, the, this portion of the game, so that's pretty awesome, so enjoy that in the background. So the first tip I have for you guys is having a variety in the classes that you're using and not just yourself but also your team this is something I noticed I see a lot of teams you know they'll they'll have at least you know some ARs some subs maybe a sniper maybe a shotgun but their classes are all kind of the same they have the same a lot of them just have you know a red dot sight red dot sight red dot sight red dot sight just all the way down it's like the same kind of thing the same kind of perks that's not really what you want to do um, what, what you really want to try and do is have you know different sites different uh, attachments as well not just sites you want to have different perks you want to have some speed ones you want to have some survivability ones like ones with tack resist or uh, blast shield things like that incog even so you know just make sure that between your teammates and everything you have different classes so that you can do more strategies and do more things and hopefully survive so the next thing is something that I need to work on as well, and I actually realized this next one while we were playing the EU team of Flight, and it wasn't their whole team, it was just a couple members, we were just kind of messing around. But they were talking about how they have so many strategies for every bomb site, and I was like, hmm, my team only kind of has like two or three, and I didn't say it out loud, but I, I was kind of thinking that. And basically the tip is, have a ton of strategies per bomb site, both on offense and defense for each map. And I don't know exactly how many you need. It's not an exact science, but have more than we have. Have more than two or three. Because right now, you know, we're good at S&D. We, do, we don't lose S&D that much. But um, if we had a lot more strategies, like if we had like, you know, seven to ten strategies or something, I don't know if that's possible. But, you know, if we had a lot like that, if we had some crazy ones that we could just throw out every now and then, we would win even more. And I think that's kind of the, one of the last little steps you can take to get better after you get the gun skill, the basic strategies, the communication down with your teammates and everything. So if you're at that level, start doing that. Just come up with some crazy strategies. See if they work. You know, you can fine tune it over a few weeks if you need to. All right. The next thing is something that, um, you know, people have learned to do in Blitz, but I don't know if they do it in S&D that much. And that's letting people run past you. And I wouldn't necessarily let them run all the way past you. I'm just saying, you know, if you're camping in a corner in a building and somebody runs in, you don't have to shoot them right away if they don't see you. Because for all you know, there's another person behind them or there's somebody on a head glitch across the map that you can see as well. And you could get a two-piece if you just play it patient. So just, you know, be aware of that sort of situation. Don't just instantly shoot if you think there might be another one there. And as long as, of course, they don't see you. If they see you, you got to shoot at them. That You don't have an option. But So, yeah. Uh, the next thing is prone strafing. And a pro player got this. I forget if it was TP or A. I, I can't remember. I'm sorry. I'm bad at remembering which one did which. But uh, one of them found out about prone strafing. And everybody's been kind of using it now. But it's not the most effective thing. However, it takes people off guard a lot. People don't expect you to be you know, kind of gliding around a corner. And the way you do this, if you don't know, is you have a thermal site or a tracker site. Um, those are the ones that I know of. There could be another one. I, I, I can't think of it at the moment, though. But you can basically just have those sites on a gun, and you can just lay down, and, you know, you can move over to the sides without putting your sights down. So you're not just crawling on your elbows. You're crawling, like, with your gun up still and steady so you can shoot. And people just don't expect you when you're coming around corners like that. Alright, the next thing is don't uh, panic jump, and this is another thing that I have to work on. You know, in this game you can climb a lot of things, and if you're panic jumping, you're going to start climbing things, and I've lost rounds before in this, I've gotten better about it, but like in the beginning of this game, especially on freight, man, I just kept climbing over the railing when I'm trying to shoot, and it lost me so many rounds, so try not to panic jump if you're around things that can climb. Try to stay in control. The next thing is setting up effectively when the bomb is down. And this is for the defensive team. If you've got, if you've got bomb down and you've got at least three people up, you can do this. Maybe you could probably try and do a variation of it with two people. But what you want to do is you want to set up around that bomb in like 
a triangle-ish pattern, and that's that's what seemed to work at Philly, and we've been starting to do that some, and it works. You just want to set up in a triangle where you can have lines of sight. It doesn't have to be, you know, like an exact equilateral triangle or anything if you're OCD, you know, it's just kind of a triangle-ish shape, and so that you can have all these different lines of sights from different angles, and you can cover all the entrances and exits. That's the what that is all about, and it works, so try that. Uh, the next thing is why have a coach and right now my team actually doesn't have a coach we are trying out coaches though and just so you guys know you know you can't really use a coach in gbs people will dispute if you have one in your team usually so just use them in scrims and lan events or possibly online tournaments if the tournament allows it not everyone does but uh, that's what they're used for and what they do for you is they will give you um you know a bonus edge on people by giving extra call outs and things of that nature realizing strategies so that we're, we're out of time so as you guys can see we're coming to the end of this video if you enjoyed it then please like comment and or subscribe if you didn't then let me know what i can do better in the comment section below constructive criticism goes a long way guys until next time everybody peace out